resilience. Right now, I'd like to talk about personal resilience. Where does personal resilience begin? There are five qualities of personal resilience. I'm going to share these with you, and I'm going to ask you if you can see a common theme in all of the qualities. So I'll share them on the screen, and then I'll ask you, what is the common theme? Five qualities of personal resilience. One is a feeling of self-understanding. Number two is a feeling of a sense of hope. Hope in the world, hope in life. Number three is a feeling for the desire to deal with the world in a healthy way, healthy coping skills. Number four, the feeling of strong relationships. Strong relationships with our friends and our families and our colleagues. Strong relationships with ourselves and the world, maybe with a higher power. It's all about relationships. Number five, a feeling of personal meaning in life. When we wake up in the morning, we must feel that there is a reason for us to wake up and be in this world. So these are five qualities of personal resilience. Do you see a common theme in each of these? Do you see a theme that is similar? Exactly. So let me ask you, it's feeling. What part of the body is associated with feeling? You tell me. The heart, precisely. Oh, I love this audience. I feel the love right now. <laughs> the heart. Thank you. The heart is where we have the experience of resilience. This is where it begins. And this is interesting because historically, science has discounted the heart. Science has completely ignored the power of the heart. They have told us it is a pump for blood only. And now we know the science is telling us it is much, much more. Okay? What is the common theme? I wanted to give you three clues so that you would know the clues to the common theme. The first clue is from a Tibetan monastery. Buddha is showing us what the common theme is. The second is from the Gnostic traditions where they are holding their hands over their heart. And the third clue is right here. It is the heart is where resilience begins. The heart is where resilience begins. How many in this room are familiar with the Institute of Heart Math? Anyone heard of the Institute of Heart Math? A couple on this side and a few on this side. And a couple here. Oh, one here. <laughs> the Institute of Heart Math is a pioneering research organization based in Northern California. They are the first scientific organization dedicated 100% to exploring the power of the human heart in unconventional ways. Unconventional ways. We know that the heart pumps blood. That is conventional. But what else does the heart do? The heart communicates with the brain. The heart communicates with other people. The heart communicates with other animals. The heart communicates with the future. The heart communicates with the past. And these are ways that the Institute of Heart Math is now exploring. They are a premier pioneering research institute exploring the power of the human heart in ways that benefit you and me. We're only beginning to understand. I'm sharing this with you because I have worked with the Institute of Heart Math for 21 years now. I am not their employee. I'm associated with them through research and friendships. And they have given me permission to share with you some of their findings. So I'm going to share them throughout the day. You will see me refer to Heart Math, and that's the reason why. 
okay? So, I wanted to talk just for a moment about resilience and stress. When the world is changing and we must change, we feel the stress. We feel the stress of the economy. We feel the stress of the jobs. Climate change is changing the way the food is grown. It changes the price of the food. It changes the availability of the food, how resources are shared. All of that means that we are feeling stress now that we have not felt in the past. This is a typical curve for the way that humans deal with stress over a period of 60 days, okay? Over a period of 60 days. So typically, when we face a stressful situation, here's what happens. At first, we seem to do pretty well. At first. We embrace the stress, and we can meet the stress. Then, we are able to maintain our baseline, this is called the baseline to deal with the stress. We are able to maintain that baseline for a period of time, in this case, from about 10 days to about 40 days. So here's 30 days in here. But then something happens. We begin to break down. It's called the hyperactive stage. The stress begins to take its toll on us until finally everything collapses. This comes about in terms of job stress. If you have a parent, an elderly parent who is going through a health condition, like Alzheimer's disease, for example, and you are caring for that parent, you know what this is all about because you feel the stress. Or if you're caring for children who have uh, health healthcare conditions. So this is the typical curve for how humans deal with a stressful situation. The world is changing, and that is creating a stressful situation for you and me. The idea is this. How do we raise the baseline? How do we find a way to be able to perform much better in the presence of the stress? This is where the resilience comes in. I'm going to share with you techniques that will help you to elevate, to raise the baseline so that you can deal with a changing world much, much more efficiently, much, in a much healthier way, without having this experience over here. Wow, there I am. I never get to look at the back of my head. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> it's still there. That's good. <laughs> okay, does this make sense with the stress? We're, we're going to talk about raising the baseline for our ability to deal with stress, with change. Does that make sense? Okay. So, how do we do that? It begins with us being able to access our heart begins in the heart. So I'm going to share the first resilience strategy. Uh, I, learned, I learned yesterday that some of you in the room this morning will not be with me for the full day. And I, I discovered this only yesterday. So last night while you were sleeping, I was working, and I rearranged the material in the program because I want to share some of the strategies with you now early in the day in case you have to leave. So I'm going to begin sharing these right now, okay? Grazie, grazie. So the very first strategy we're going to talk about is called heart-focused breathing. Heart-focused breathing. Let me tell you what it is. Let me tell you why it's important and how very, very simple it is 
to experience, okay? Why would we want to have heart-focused breathing? What is the purpose? What is the benefit of heart-focused breathing? The first part of this is that when you encounter a stressful situation, when you have an argument with your husband, with your wife, with your partner, when you have a difficult job, when your children are giving you a difficult time, when you are in traffic driving on the highways of Italy, sometimes it's stressful. <laughs> you probably cannot change the situation, but you can change how you respond to the situation. So heart-focused breathing actually decreases the stress in your response. It turns down the volume of the stress is the term that is used. And here's the way it works. This is very interesting to me. When your body is in stress mode, it is going through a process and it allows nothing else to happen. It is going through a cycle, the stress cycle. You can feel the tension. You can feel the warmth. Your body begins to produce high levels of adrenaline, high levels of cortisol, called the stress hormones. The blood begins to leave your extremities and go to the organs where it is needed the most. Your fingers may become cold, your face may become white, because all the blood is moving into the core of the body. When you begin heart-focused breathing, it interrupts the stress response. It interrupts the stress response just long enough so something else can begin. It interrupts all of the stress chemistry just long enough for something else to begin. And heart-focused breathing is the first step of everything else that we will do through the end of today. All the other techniques will always begin with heart-focused breathing. So, it is a technique unto itself, and it is the first step of other techniques.